Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to present to you our work about efficient networks for universal sound separation and the network that we proposed called SudoRMRF. This is a joint work with my lab mate, uh, Jeppe, and my um, advisor, Paris Maragdis. So in signal channel uh, separation models, uh, the goal is to uh, take as an input uh, a mixture and essentially extract the individual sources that that, co uh, that consist in this mixture. You, uh, recent architecture performed a time domain audio source separation, and they are trained by optimizing a time domain loss. And usually this loss uh, leads to optimizing uh, scale invariant signal to distortion uh, ratio. This uh, kind of networks uh, have obtained state-of-the-art separation results in multiple separation tasks, such as speech, music, or universal sound separation. But the performance is not the only aspect that we should care about. Model complexity is another, con is another big concern uh, for training or deploying models. So model complexity has multiple uh, phases. First of all, uh, there is the number of trainable parameters inside each network or the number of executed floating point operations. Also, the intermediate representations and the model itself needs uh, some space to be stored, so the actual memory allocation is another big issue. And finally, the time for, completely, for completing each process and running the model uh, is, uh, is, is also a concern. Previous work in audio processing has been mostly focused on optimizing the, the separation performance or also proposing some efficient architectures in terms of uh, reducing the number of trainable parameters. Other works in image domain and not only I have proposed uh, several low resource or resource efficient architectures such as mobile nets or performing a neural architecture searches in order to find this kind of models. So finding a good neural architecture uh, is, uh, is actually not a trivial thing. So for example, here we have the red model, which is better in terms of performance compared to the green one, but it requires much more computational resources. So we have this trade-off between good performance and computational resources, which is very important where training time is limited or uh, we need to perform real-time separation on mobile or edge devices. So finding a good model should be uh, a multi-objective optimization process and there's always a trade-off, as we said. So the MRF is actually able to achieve competitive performance with low a computational requirements. SudoRMRF actually stands for successive downsampling and resampling of multi-resolutional uh, features. So the overall SudoRMRF architecture is actually very similar to uh, ConfDasNet, gets as an input the mixture, uh, the encoder and the decoder um, are uh, very similar to ConfDasNet and what we really change is inside the separation module all the, or the mask estimation uh, module is that we replace the dilated separable convolutional blocks with successive downsampling and upsampling convolutional blocks. So what we mean by that? Inside each uh, convolutional block inside ConfTasnet, uh, we, ex we have some representation in terms of channels and time dimension. Then we expand the channels and we perform a depth-wise depth -wise separable dilate convolutions across time. And then we go back by reducing, by applying one more dense layer and go, go, uh, go back to the previous number of channels. So what we do in SudoRMRF, Yukon blocks, is that again, we perform uh, this channel expansion and reduction. And for the convolution, for the time convolutions, we perform again depth-wise separable convolutions, but now for the downsampling part, we perform successive strided 1D convolutions, and for the upsampling part, we perform nearest neighbor interpolation um, in order to upsample. And then we add all these multi-scale features together. So why should 
one, let's say, use this kind of stack Yukon blocks? First of all, we can uh, uh, operate on the same granularity level uh, for, as you see here in the input and the output, which is extremely important. Also, we can avoid artifacts which are related dilated convolutions and we can increase the effective receptive fields because of, of all these downsampling and upsampling procedures with low cost and less parameters. Also, all these convolutions are, very, are computed very fast and they are depth-wise separable. Inside each block, we actually aggregate features from multiple scales, which is another aspect of these uh, Yukon blocks. In order to uh, perform uh, the experiments, we, uh, we generated um, 20,000 uh, training mixtures and 3,000 for validation and testing. We also use an online data augmentation process where we choose two uh, source audio files at random and we chop four consecutive seg seconds from each one of them and we mix them at random uh, signal to noise ratios. So we consider two different tasks. For the speed separation task, we extract, uh, we, we generate the mixtures from utterances from Wall Street Journal Corpus. And for the known speed separation task, we use um, uh, sources from the environmental sound classification collection, which consists, uh, consists of 50 uh, various uh, sound classes. In order to evaluate uh, the pseudo-RMRF models and compare with the literature, we use a separation performance metric, the scale invariant signal to distortion, uh, signal to distortion ratio improvement over the input mixture. And we measure uh, the computational resources for two modes, one a forward pass on CPU and the backward pass on GPU. For the computational resources, again, we measure the trainable parameters in millions, the number of a uh, of flops uh, in gigaflops, uh, the, the memory allocation in gigabytes, and the time for completing its process in seconds. So the proposed RMRF models are actually parameterized with the number of stacked Yukon blocks that we use. For the full model, we use 16 blocks, while for the smallest one, we only use four. And we compare, uh, as we said, uh, with, diff, uh, with various uh, music, speech, and universal sound source operation, state-of-the-art models which exist out there. So the SISDR uh, now versus uh, the trainable parameters, we see here that the x-axis will always be um, uh, in log scale. And we see that the pseudo-MRF models, which are uh, annotated with the star here, uh, actually uh, contain less kind of trainable parameters compared to uh, most of the other um, uh, models uh, in the literature. And this is because we, uh, the Yukon, each Yukon block it consists of simple convolutions and the upsampling um, uh, operation is non-parametric. And we obtain very good performance for both speeds and non-speed separation with less parameters. So now in terms of SISDR versus the number of flops, we see here that the pseudo-MRF models um, obtain a very good performance with less number of flops for both a forward pass on CPU versus a backward pa pass on GPU. And this is actually really important for both uh, training with uh, a budget constraint or inference on an edge device. Now, compared to the memory allocation, we see here that the intermediate representations uh, for pseudo-RMRF models do not require so much memory. And this is because the successive downsampling operation allow us to store smaller and smaller intermediate representations and extracting multi-scale multi features. And this is really important because, uh, because when, uh, when using uh, those models for real-time inference on mobile device, uh, usually uh, memory is one of, uh, of our uh, problems that we face there. Finally, for uh, SSDR versus execution time, we see here that pseudo-MRF models uh, require uh, minimal uh, latency and, uh, and we could also further improve uh, those performance metrics um, 
where if if using better implementations because right now currently we use pytorch dynamic computation graph so if we switch to uh, to a static computation graph uh, these numbers would become even better and this is a really critical for real-time deployment of the models so now for a holistic view of of the separation performance as we see here uh, uh, in the up four rows, we see the literature models and the pseudo RMRF models are the three on the bottom. We see here that, for example, for the full uh, model, we obtain similar performance uh, results in terms of SISDR. And in most of the uh, low uh, of the uh, computational requirements, we see a relative gain compared to the best model. Uh, and if we see here, the best model is different for its computational um, resource aspect. Uh, now, if we have uh, the number of uh, Yukon blocks that we use, again, we can achieve similar performance on both tasks, but we see uh, as, uh, an, even, an even better relative gain compared to all, uh, to all uh, computational resource aspect, which is really important. So if we really need a, a very tiny uh, model, which is really efficient, we can see here that we can obtain similar performance and there is a significant uh, relative gain compared to the best model. So optimizing only for towards separation performance might lead to deficiency in various computational resource aspects and to the MRF models obtain a similar performance to state of the art models by also uh, uh, keeping uh, the uh, computational resource requirements quite low. And this, is, uh, this results is across the board for all computational aspects. So in order to conclude, we have proposed the pseudo MRF models which are based on successive downsampling and upsampling of, of multi-scale features. And these models, uh, we have shown that these models uh, can obtain uh, close to state-of-the-art performance with minimal computational requirements. We have also suggested several computational resource metrics and we believe that new models should also report uh, this kind of metrics because various users could focus on uh, specific aspects that they want for their application. And one of the main messages of this paper is that we cannot actually ignore uh, this kind of computational resource aspects when we propose new models. In the future, we would like to extend the pseudo MRF models uh, for real time computation and probably perform neural architecture searches in order to find uh, more efficient architectures. So if you're interested about the implementation and the code, you can find it here and you can also find an improved version of, of the pseudo MRF architecture uh, or you can uh, use the code in order to measure your, the computational requirements of your model. So thank you all very much. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to meet all of you in the Q&A session. Thanks a lot.